Hi everyone, welcome to another video on electronics with Professor Mughal. Today we're going to learn about timing and delays in modeling. So Vivado allows adding simulation timings in Verilog descriptions. Um, if a blank Verilog file is to be open, uh, we've seen that Vivado adds the first line automatically as time scale uh, slash one um, space one nanosecond slash one picoseconds. But do we really know what does what does that mean? So what it really means are these are the default timing values such that the first one, one in a second, that indicates the reference time unit. So whenever a time value is added to the Verilog description, it will be in the order of one nanoseconds. So if we say hash five, that means five nanoseconds. The second timing value, which is one P as one picoseconds, that indicates the smallest precision that can be achieved. And this is important, especially when we do simulation, which we're going to do in this uh, in this video. I'm going to show you how you set the timing and delay when setting up your outputs. So, hence the default smallest precision in in simulation is one picosecond, like I mentioned. And again, these values will be of use during simulation, and they will have no effect in the actual FPGA realization setup. So, up to this point, like if you look at the last three videos that I posted. Up to this point, we did not physically, uh, we did not take the physical characteristics of logic gates into account in simulation. In other words, we assume all delay times to be zero with all logic gates. Uh, so, if the user wants to obtain accurate results, especially in timing diagrams, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna show you, for the implementation of the digital system, then delays values should be added to the Verilog description, and it's very, very important, and critical part of, you know, be able to see the functionality of your logic circuit. Uh, so these can be done in connection with the reference time unit. Now there are three delay types that can be added to a digital device in Verilog. These are the rise delay, which is basically the amount of time it takes for the output to go from zero to one. And then the fall delay, the amount of time it takes for the output to go from logic one to zero. And then the turn off delay, right? So the rise delay indicates the transition time, like I said, going from logic value to logic one. The fall delay indicates transition needed from any logic value to logic zero. And the turn off delay indicates the transition time needed from any logic value to high impedance. So for example, if I say exclusive or hash three comma four comma five, so what does that really mean? Well, that means the rise delay is taken as three time units, which means because the nanoseconds, that's the time unit that's set, three nanoseconds for the rise time. Fall delay is taken as four time units. So the fall time is four nanoseconds. And then turn off delay is taken as five time units, which is five nanoseconds. So again, in terms of reference time, these values will be three nanoseconds, four nanoseconds, and five nanoseconds respectively. We can also apply delay values in data flow modeling. So in this pro in this video, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna create a logic circuit using data flow modeling. It's a simple uh, combination of exclusive OR gate, AND gates and OR gates and inverter. Let's have a look at the very log code real quick. So here we define our two inputs and the two outputs, I label them as in one, in two, out one, and out two. And then there are two outputs. Out one is basically, you take the end gate of the in one and in two, and the OR gate of in two, and then take an exclusive OR of the two. So if you look at it, if I do a quick schematic right here, that's what it is. You got this two inputs, they go into end gate and OR gate. The output of the two gates then goes into an exclusive OR gate. The other output, which is output two, is just simply an inverter of input two. So if you look at the schematic, that takes the input two, inverts it, and throws out it out two. What is interesting here is that I was telling you is hash 20 and 10. So the amount of time it would take for the logic when it goes from zero to one, uh, that's the rise time right here, okay? And this is the fall delay. When the logic goes from, you know, any value to zero, that's the amount of time it will have a delay before it goes to zero. And then I followed up by the end module. I'll just quickly over go over my test bench file. 
here's my test bench file uh, again uh, as I have told you many times declaring all the inputs as registers and then so they can store values and change them and declaring all the outputs as wires in instantiating the module that we had just created which I labeled as ed ed delay uh, initialize begin initially both the inputs are set to zero having a hundred uh, and then a hundred seconds hundred nanoseconds it's gonna be 100 nanosecond global reset to finish this is something that i covered in a video before the last video i created i'll set a link in the description what it really does is because initial value is zero every 100 nanosecond it's gonna increment it by one so it goes zero one two three uh and then it basically reset itself right um this is something if you want to display truth table in the tc console you can use this part of the code but it's really optional if you don't need to you don't have to uh and all f all you need to do is to make sure you save it click on the synthesis right run synthesis i already did the synthesis here and i'm gonna do i'm gonna choose my test bench file i'm gonna run simulation and then i'm going to click run behavioral simulation and once you do that it's going to open this timing waveform right here so if you look at the simulation diagram over here and notice over here when the logic goes from zero to one uh that is because we set the logic in in our design that whenever it goes to one it takes roughly about uh 20 seconds and then 10 seconds for the fall so let's look at over here it roughly takes 20 seconds actually if i just zoom in it should be it should be 20 seconds right there 20 nanoseconds right correct and similarly when if you look at it the out two is just an invert of uh this n2 right so when it's zero during this time the output is uh, is gonna be one and when the input two goes to one the output should go to zero but it does not go immediately zero it goes to zero after 10 nanoseconds right 10 nanoseconds and that's because we that's how we design the logic so these timing delays are actually perfect and especially when it comes to you know making sure the functionality of your your code uh, your hardware before you implement onto the board you want to do simulation and you make sure that there are no glitches or there are no potential errors that could disrupt the functionality of your program with this, I'm going to finish today's lecture. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will definitely be replying as soon as I can. Enjoy your rest of the day. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.